Well, if you're online today, a special welcome to you as well. But, um, you know, we're just believing for great days. Are we not? So have a smile at somebody. Have a seat. <laughs> it's cool. I'm going to say it's cool. So, what season are you in? Are you in the flourishing season? Are you in a season where you just got to trust God for everything? What is your season? You know, we're doing a series at the moment called Stability. And just understanding the, the purpose and the power of being solid in life. What moves you? What shakes you? What challenges you? What rocks you? What throws you off the, off the side of the boat? What causes you to, to sink? What causes you to, to kind of lose your way? Well, the great thing is today, God's got some answers for you to help you in any context, in any situation of your life, to help you to understand that you can be solid. And so God wants to get you out of survival. There's principles to learn in survival, things that you don't need to panic while you're in survival. And then you've got to move to stability. Once you're in stability, you start to really understand that a solid life progresses your life. And then you need to move into success. Once you've got success moving and all that means, how many know that by now there's good success and there's not such good success? God talks about a good success. And then we're going to talk about significance in the coming season. So wherever you are today, you have got an opportunity to put some things inside your life that will cause you to get more solid. When you get on a rock, you become solid. The waves can beat, but you stay solid. When you're in a river and you get onto the river bank, you become solid. So they're natural analogies, but how do you work that into your life? How do you work out whether you are becoming solid and how will you find out if you're solid? Well, it hits with a storm. It hits with a situation of life that you weren't anticipating and all of a sudden you're in it and you will find out if you're solid or not. But the great news is Jesus wants you solid. He wants you to be rock, a rock in a moment, being able to withstand any context of your life, to be able to stand up and move forward. Shall we go to the Scriptures today? Come on, we're going to get into it, and hopefully this will bless your life and encourage your life and move you forward. Amen. It's cool. All righty. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than is needed, being continually aware that your labor, even to the point of exhaustion in the Lord, is not futile nor wasted. It is never without purpose. So we talked about a few weeks ago that you need to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Jesus says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So make sure you hear carefully, you hear intentionally, that you are one that applies the things that you know to be true in your, look, in your life. We talked about how truth is the foundation that causes your life to either be set free, put on a rock, cause you to be in a place where you can overcome any circumstance of life. We then went into a context of helping us to understand a little bit more of an area that we all deal with in terms of our finances and how you deal with finances. Does God want you wealthy? Well, we can see clearly from the Scriptures that God wants you wealthy. But God does not want you chasing riches. So God put in His Word four things to make sure you don't chase riches and riches don't, chase, don't get a hold of you. But they should be hunting you down. So we talked about how the importance of the tithe is God's means of blessing you. We talked about how first fruits was the means of God blessing you. We talked about how need giving is God's means of blessing you. And then we talked about how sowing seed is God's means of blessing you, all in the context of giving. Every one of those four types of giving in the Bible have different promises. We talked about how three of them are to God and one is to man. 
We talked about how when you tithe, God opens the windows of heaven and gives you insights, ideas, and concepts. That's so much so that his ideas, you don't even have room enough to receive all the ideas, all the insights, and all the concepts to bring into your life. They're God ideas. Anybody can have an idea. Anybody can have a, a concept. But I want a God idea. A God idea is solid. A God idea lasts. Then we talked about first fruits. And how first fruits, the Bible says, there'll be increase and your barns will overfill fill, filled with plenty. Amen? Does anyone remember what I said a few weeks ago? When I talked about when God brings increase into your life. And I used the analogy that... You know, perhaps, you know, you might have a saving on your power bill of, a, of 400 pounds. Does anyone remember that? And that, you know, the first fruits of that would be like the first 40 of the month goes to the Lord. You remember I said that? Is it not interesting right now that we're about to all get 400 pounds? That's gone over your head. How did I know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I didn't know that. I think it was quite funny that I said that, though. You know, perhaps God's wanting us to get some ideas and get some insights and get some concepts that he's wanting to bring into your life in a very powerful and a very real way. We talked about how when you are following Christ that you give to humanity. It's called need giving. You, you have empathy towards humanity. You have compassion towards humanity. And when you give to humanity, you're not giving to God. You're giving to people. That shocks a lot of people. Now, read your Bible. This, the Bible says this, He who lend, gives to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay. So pound for pound, whatever you give to the, to the poor, God gives back to you. We talked about how you, when you sow seed, God will bring back 30, 60, and 100 fold into your life according to the faith that you sow the seed in. And this is what we learned through the four types of giving. If you give wherever you want to give, and so, for example, if you give your tithe to the poor, you change the ratio of the blessing. It's not a bad thing necessarily, but God says, hey, do it my way so you understand the principles. God says, if you give to the poor, you'll get back. God says, if you give to him, he'll give you 36 in a hundredfold. Now, we've got to do all four. In the believer's life, the, all four must run through our life. So I thought I'd touch a little bit more on the whole area of sowing and reaping on the 30, 60, and 100 fold. Then if I'm going to teach you from the scriptures in a few weeks' time, how do you tap into the thousands anointing? Because there's a thousands anointing. There's an anointing of great increase upon a believer's life. I'll give you one example. Jesus had it. He could turn two, two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread, or five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish, and feed thousands. That's called an anointing of thousands. And you can sow and you can start to believe for incredible increase upon your life. But today we're just going to come to the point of sowing. What does it mean to sow? Are you with me so far? Increases upon your life. Amen. We're going to go to Mark chapter 4. Let's have a look at this. Sowing is the key factor or the beginning factor of the kingdom of God. Jesus said, unless you get this parable, you won't get the rest. So I think it's really important that we understand what this principle is really all about. Mark chapter 4 and verses 13 to 20. We talked about this last week. We're going to go over some stuff again. It says, then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? Then he says this question to them, how then will you understand any parable? So he's going, you can't even look at any other parable that I teach unless you get this one. This is the foundational principle of kingdom life. You can go back to the book of Genesis where the word of the Lord is teaching us that while there is winter and harvest, uh, sorry, winter and summer, while there is cold and heat, while the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest. It is a principle of life. And so as believers, you've got to understand the power of what you sow and how you sow and what you, what you water into your life. So Jesus is really bringing an emphasis that you've got to understand this is how life works. This is how you are meant to 
uh, function under the manufacturer, the creator of all things in your life. You function this way, you'll get kingdom success, is what he's saying. He says, the farmer sows the word. So people are like, so some people like seed along the path where the word is sown. And as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and he takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seen sowed on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last for a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 times what was sown. It's a powerful, encouraging scripture that we are to sow in life and expect a harvest in life. The focus is not the sowing, but the sowing is exceptionally important. We want to sow to get a harvest. What you are sowing, here it's saying sow the word. So we are in the word, we're studying the word, the word is reading our life. We are encouraged by the word. And as we sow the word into our life, we can expect the harvest. That's what it's saying. So then you can break it down. What parts of the word or all parts of the word are you thinking about when you think about sowing? For example, we've been saying the last few, few weeks, is healing in the word? So you can sow for healing. Is health in the whole picture in the word? Does God want your soul prospering? Does he want your mind prospering? Does he want every aspect of your life prospering? So you've got to sow into the Word. And as you sow into the Word, you know you're going to reap something. So I want to teach you a few things in the time that I have with you today around sowing and encourage you to think about how you need to sow. If any area of your life is not moving forward and you have sown, be patient. If any area of your life is not moving forward, ask yourself, am I sowing? Because this is the principle of the kingdom. So we're going to learn a few things. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Number one, it's pretty obvious. If you don't sow, you cannot reap. Often people are going, Lord, just bless my life. Bless my life. And they get confused about grace. Grace is God's unearned favor upon your life. So God can bless you and provide for you. But if you want to change your life and you want to move your life forward, you've got to sow. If you want to get educated, you've got to sow. You've got to sow time. You've got to read. You've got to study. If you want to get physically better, you need to sow. If you want to get financially going forward, you need to sow. If you want better relationships, you need to sow. If you want things to go to the next level, you need to sow. Question, what are you sowing into? Are there gaps in your life that you're not sowing into that you think, man, I need to produce some things in my life that is going to actually help me. So if you don't sow, you cannot reap. Number two, you've got to sow on, on a place that's good ground. Good ground. Places that are going to produce, a, produce in your life. You know, I started off with that verse. It's one of my favorite verses of the Bible. It says, be immovable. Always. 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 Come on, someone say always. Always. Abounding. In the work of the Lord. Not sometimes, not occasionally. Always. Always. Are you an always type of person? Are you a seeker of God always? Are you passionate about the things of God always? You know, listen, I'm not talking about emotions and feelings every now and again that come and go. But do you have a determination that says, Lord, always, always, in season, out of seasons, always, how can you be abounding when it's not your season? Because abounding comes from within. The abounding joy of God, the abounding love of God, the abounding peace of God, that's not conditional according to your circumstances. That's conditional according to what you're sowing into your life. I don't know about you, but I want to live in the immovable, always 
abounding. So you've got to sow on good ground, something that is intentional, thinking about where to sow and how to sow. Third one, you can reap with what someone else has sown, but understand this, someone has already sown it. You cannot reap what has not been sown. But you can reap what someone else has sown. Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 4 and verses 36 to 38. He says, Already the reaper is receiving his wages and he is gathering fruit for eternal life so that he who plants and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this case, the saying is true, one person sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap a crop from which you have not worked. Others have worked and you have the privilege to reap the results of their work. But understand this principle, where there is no sowing, there is no reaping. And if you get into a privileged position where you start get, get, getting given stuff that you never sowed for, you're in a privileged place. But understand this today, without an t- intentional sowing, that's why we honor generations that have gone before us. Why? Because that's why God's big on don't remove the ancient landmarks. Don't touch them. Don't move them. Have respect on what has gone before you. Generations have laid down. Generations have poured out. Generations have cost their lives. Generations have sown so that you would receive. It, it says don't forget these things. You're reaping some of those things. Do you know there's a day coming in your life? I don't know whether it's next week or in a year's time or a decade's time. There is a day coming that you will simultaneously reap and sow all in the same season. There comes a stage in life that you're not just sowing, you're also reaping. And if you sow while you're reaping, you'll always be in the season of sowing and reaping. How many want to live in that season? That takes a, a a, normally a, a time for you to get into that place. Younger people understand this. Your season right now is to sow a heck of a lot. The generations who are a little bit more mature... Anybody? My hand's down, Dermot's hand's up. But uh, understand this today, that, that you need to keep sowing, not just for your own life, but you need to sow for generations to come. That's why we sow, we sow our wisdom, we sow our understanding, we sow with the knowledge that God has given us so that others don't have to make the same mistakes that we've made. Amen? We sow to reap a harvest. You sow into your kids. Come on. You sow into your kids. What do you sow into your kids? The kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? You teach your kids how to sow and reap. That's why you as a parent or you as a parent to be one day, you need to understand the principle of sowing and reaping. God says this, do not be mocked. God will not be mocked. What a man sows is that which he will reap. So we sow intentionally into our kids. That's why I say to parents all the time, get them to youth. Get them to youth. Why? Because you're sowing. You're sowing into your kids' lives. Even when your kids go, I don't want to go. You're going. Why? Because you understand the principle. Listen, I've watched it. I've watched it over the years when parents didn't. Listen, you've got you to sow into them. And you've got to believe in them. Give them opportunity to experience the presence of God. Give them the opportunity so they can stand against a tide going one way. We've got to get our kids with some backbone. Stand up for what they believe in. Stand up for truth. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for the ways of the kingdom. Do it with a spirit of life and of joy and of power and of strength. But you've got to sow into that. So in the generations that come, that's why we talk a lot about legacy. We talk about, we had a Legacy Giants uh, info night on, on Wednesday. How cool was that? It was brilliant. Full of life. People going, man, I'm believing God. I'm not just thinking about myself. I'm thinking beyond myself. I'm thinking down the future. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to set this thing up. It's awesome. See, it's sowing and it's reaping. You sow into a generation to reap a generation. Yeah, that's why truth is important. Truth is hugely important. 
what you believe you're going to stand on. You're living your whole life on the basis of what you believe. So if a storm can knock that thing down, that's not truth. Yeah? Because truth stands. Jesus says, truth will set you free. Truth will make you solid. That's why confessing the word of God today, today, I serve El Shaddai. God is more than enough. He's not just enough. He is more, more. Come on, somebody say more, more than enough, more, more. Hey, listen, he's not just going to meet your needs, your budget this month. He's going to supply more than enough. He's just not going to give you a few friends. He's going to give you more than enough friends. Whatever you need, he shall supply. Don't ask God for your needs. Ask him for your wants. Are you with me? Don't keep asking for what he's already given you. You'll, you'll get into toxicity faith. It'll confuse your faith if you keep asking him for the things he's already given you. God has given you everything you need to live out a life of godliness. What you need is wisdom of how to use it. How do I use it? God will give you an idea. God, give me some more wisdom on that idea. You've given me some insight. I need more wisdom, God, on how to pull that off. What do I need to access right now? This is what we're teaching. How do you access the kingdom of God? How do you start receiving a 30, 60, and 100-fold return? I'm a testimony of God's 100-fold return. God can turn things around. God can maneuver things around. And I, I, I tell you, unless you can count it, you can't measure it. That's why we're encouraging people, put a marking block down. Where are you today? It doesn't matter where you are today. What matters is where you'll be in a year, where you'll be in 10 years. And God will bring about what he said he'll bring about. What you are sowing is what you are reaping. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap sin. If you sow to the spirit, you'll reap life and peace. And you'll get everything that the kingdom offers you. Everything in the kingdom of God is health, healing, and wealth. You don't chase those things. You receive those things. Why? It's your right as a believer to access them. And you have a supernatural favor upon your life. Loipa messaged me this week on how she sowed into our legacy. And this week received, was it this week? received a phenomenal increase of the kingdom of God upon her life. Isn't it awesome? We heard from Numa this week. We heard from Chris Dixon last week. There are so many stories coming back. It is not about getting rich, but it is sowing for a reward. And you are saying, God, thank you. Thank you. Just put your hand on your head and say, Lord, I thank you. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet. My body is healthy. My lungs are good. My heart is strong. My mind is alert. I have the mind of Christ. My arteries are good. My back is good. My stomach is good. I'm healed according to the stripes of Jesus. Amen. That's called a confession of faith. You walk in that. I just think God is constantly trying to get stuff to us. That's why he talks about seven ways of being healed. He's just trying to get us to get it. You can't get it that way, get it a different way. I just want to get you healed. I want to get you whole. I want to get you doing good. I want you, I want you to be full of joy. I want you overflowing with peace. I, he's just trying to pour it back into your life, but it's all about how you're sowing. It's how you're reaping. I was talking to some Germans last weekend. I was in uh, Constance with an old buddy of mine, Freimut Haverkamp, doing the Kingdom Builders Retreat and talking about this, this whole topic, about how you are living in someone's idea. That ultimate idea is God's idea. 
you're living in God's big idea. What's God's big idea? That he'd be a king over his kingdom with a royal family. I talked about how they're living in a, they were in a building, we're in a meeting, and he said, well, you're in a building, that was somebody's idea. You know, your pastor's leading you, that's, that's his idea. That's why when you understand God wants to help you with ideas, it's going to change your life. Someone needs an idea today. You need an idea on how to move your life forward. You need an idea. Because you can't just have the principles of sowing and reaping. Yeah, I get that. What does that mean? Ideas. Insight. How does that really start? Honor God with your tithe. He said he'll open the windows. Bring your first fruits. Give to humanity. Sow some seed into the kingdom of God. Ideas. That's how the kingdom works. We often hear pastors and leaders say, God said. And it, it, I believe often it is a God said, but really they're going, God gave me an idea. I just had another idea. I'm getting so many ideas at the moment, it's kind of overwhelming. But I go, that's the scripture. God will open up the windows of heaven, pour out so much blessing, you won't have room enough to receive it. Getting so many ideas. What about you? Are you getting a few ideas? We are you going, dang, dang, Lord, here's another idea. Here's another idea. And you've got to put a few on the shelf and go, I'm going to look at that one in 24. <laughs> just, say, just say I'm not ready to answer that. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Are you catching this? You've got to sow to reap. You sow because you, you're after increase is the next one. Sowing is for increase. You want to see more. If you want to change the landscape, you sow. If there's, if there's no trees on the land and you want some fruitful trees on the land, you sow, you sow certain types of seed so that those trees appear in a decade's time and you change the landscape. You know, there's always a way forward, you got, but you've got to start sowing. I, I mean, miracles and healings are wonderful. I, 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 and we're going to believe God tonight. We're going to have a bit of a night of power in our 6 p.m. service and you know we've had miracles and healings week after week seeing God just heal people of all different types of things and how cool is that but I've come to learn that those things in themselves don't change lives I mean if somebody's crippled and they walk it's going to change their life right but it doesn't change the inside it doesn't change the inside you can you can you know, someone's sight gets better and someone's, you know, has a growth removed. And, you know, it's wonderful. And we praise God for every one of those miracle things. And we go, wow, isn't God awesome? But it doesn't change them on the inside. You know, that's why Jesus said, even if I raise someone from the dead, they still won't believe. What you've got to understand is what you're putting in yourself. What are you, what are you sowing into you? Is, produ is producing a stability, a strength, a courage, a life. You know, you're, you're going to sometimes in your own moment just lift your hands to God and say, God, I'm going to praise you no matter what. I'm going to worship you no matter what. I'm going to give you honor no matter what. I'm telling you, as you do that, you change the condition of your insides. Stress, go to praise. Anxiety, go to prayer. Places of, I don't know, pick up a book. Probably pick up the book and then pick up some other books as well. <laughs> Sowing into your life so you can be stable and solid. We all get the same opportunities in terms of this stuff. We don't all get the same opportunities in life, but we all get the same opportunities in terms of the kingdom. You have an opportunity. God sows the seed and gives people the opportunity. And he talks about the four different types of ground, and he throws it out there. That's how we throw it out there. We say, God, we're going to throw. We understand some of our seed's not going to land. That's all right. Some of our seed is going to fall by the wayside. Some of that stuff. But we're going, Lord, where's the good ground? Where's the good ground? What is producing a 30, 60, and a hundredfold return. 
If you hear something on love today and something booms inside of you and you go, wow, that's called a seed has been sown and you've received it. You nurture that seed. You water that seed. You speak over that seed. In 10 years' time, you'll be one of the most loving people on the planet because you'll know you're loved, that your Father in heaven loves you, that he wants to bless you, that he wants to walk with you, that he wants to help you, that he wants to strengthen you, that he wants to take care of you, and that love just keeps washing over you, and you go, I'm daddy's favorite boy. I'm daddy's favorite girl, and whatever I put my hand to, I'm going to prosper because dad is with me. Dad is with me, and he'll guide me and look after me. Every now and again, he'll give me a tap on the bottom, but that's okay because he's a loving father. Listen, God has the ability to blow things off your life. We learned that at Legacy Giants. For his kids. Sometimes it's God going, no, you're not having that one. And it was just about the land, and he goes, not that one. That's hard to take in the season. But when you know you have a loving father who's looking after you, not everything bad's happening to you is because of Satan. Come on. And God's trying to bring the very best of the best into our life. Today, when you think about sowing, when you think about what you need to sow into, how's your family? How's your fitness? How's your finances? How's your future? How's your faith? How are those five Fs? Are you sowing into them? Because everything stems around those five Fs. God first, and those five Fs are under it. And God works with management. And God wants you to be a manager of all of those five Fs. So how do you sow into it? You start speaking over it. You start declaring truth over it. And then you start getting wisdom and knowledge on how to move it forward. Things are not automatic. You have to learn. You didn't automatically know how to walk. You had to develop a place where you could walk as a kid. And all your life, you're going to have the opportunity, as God has laid the opportunity in front of all of us. He says this, understand this is how the kingdom works. And once you get this one, he says, I'll show you some other ones. But until you get this one, you'll never get insight on those ones. You need to understand this is how my kingdom works. What you sow is what you reap. Full stop. If you sow good stuff, you'll reap good stuff. If you sow wrong stuff, you'll reap wrong stuff. What's the wrong stuff? Does that mean life can't go against you? No, it's, it's internal. We live in a broken, fallen world. It's not measured externally. It's measured internally. Are you solid? Are you solid? God wants you solid. And if you have nothing, are you solid? And if you have plenty, are you solid? So it's not whether you have lots or you have nothing. Are you solid? Paul got to the place where he says, I know what it is to have plenty, and I know what it is to have nothing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am solid. Are you solid today? I'm praying that God will help you. If you're in a place of survival, this is Frankie. Why don't you come up, buddy? If you're in a place of survival, hey, listen, every new level will create a survival situation. Don't get put off by a survival. I've been through many survivals, and we'll have a few more to go. Why? Because every time you go up, there's a place of unknown. Never been there before, never done that before, never created that before, so I don't know how to do that. That's survival. You stay there for a while, but once you know the, the principles of survival, you don't freak out. You don't go, oh, no, what, you, what do I do here? You know the principles. That's why one day I'd love to go with Bear Grylls. He never freaks out, and no matter what context is, he knows how to survive. And then he knows how to thrive. So you will go through a survival. So it's not an issue if you're in it today. It's all good. But you need to get to the bank. You need to, you need to get solid. You need to get to a rock. Because some things you don't want to stay in too long. Because you're in it too long, what starts to happen is you start to find that you get weary. And that's why the encouragement of the Scripture says, be immovable always. 
abounding in the work of the Lord. Listen, the enemy of reaping in God is giving up. That's what the Lord says. Don't grow weary in doing good. For in due season you shall reap if you don't faint. How do you, know, how do you stop fainting? Get solid. Get solid. How do you get solid? Sow into your, sow you into your internals. What do you believe? What do you believe? If I believe the right stuff, I'll be solid. If I believe that nothing can ever go wrong and things are bulletproof, you will hit a cap, a capsizing of your own boat. If you believe that God works all things together for good, you're going to stay solid. If you believe that God is faithful in season and out of season, you'll stay solid. And God wants you getting absolutely solid in life. The Bible says this in Psalms, the righteous fear no bad report. A righteous man is a solid man. Righteousness is firstly found in Christ, then it's a muscle that is built over time. To do the right thing is an outworking of the initial moment you have with Jesus. When Christ comes into your life, you go, thank you, Lord. I now receive your love, your forgiveness, and your transformation on the inside. I'm now forgiven. Shame and guilt is taken off. And the Bible says righteousness is put on the inside of you. And then from there, you walk out a life that says, I'm going to walk in seeking first the kingdom of God and doing what is right in the kingdom. That's, my friend, is a muscle. And that muscle must be developed. To do the right thing in all the five Fs is a muscle. But the more you do it, the more you stay true to what you know to be right, God is faithful. Let's stand to our feet. Did you receive the word this morning? Actual, great days ahead for you, mate. Do you believe that? Getting married? Is that still happening? Just checking. It's good. God's giving you wisdom, my friend. He's giving you wisdom for the moment. He's giving you insight. He's giving you some understanding. He's fueling a few things in you. You know, when I was in Germany, God spoke to me really strongly. Because I kept hearing this word. I've heard this word globally. People are burned out. People are burned out. Heard it here. Heard it in Germany. Heard it in America. People are burned out. And God... God spoke to me. He said, no, it's not true. They ran out of fuel. They ran out of fuel. They, they missed the third principle of Genesis. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Subdue, dominate. Principle of life in the kingdom of God. Refuel. God's refueling you, my friend. He's replenishing you. He's refreshing you. He's growing you. He's moving your life forward. I think you need to just refresh yourself in God more and more. His love, His grace, His peace, let Him refresh you. Let Him refuel you. Every now and again, you've got to go to the petrol station and fuel up, mate. That's your, that's your season. You've got a lot coming up. You're getting married, man. That's big. That's big. Massive. Let God top you up. And you'll live above all the all what's rattling. All that's underneath the surface. Get in the boat. Don't be worried about the sharkies under the water. As long as you're in the water, as long as you're in the boat, mate, you're all good. And I want to encourage you. Christ has never left you. He's always been with you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to enlarge you. And cause your life to flourish, mate. Amen. Awesome. Can we close our eyes and bow our head? I want to give people the opportunity today to respond to the Lord Jesus.
that you today would understand that His love is great towards you, that His strength towards you is, is enormous, His peace towards you. And if you would today just allow Him to come into your life, maybe, maybe you've walked in for the first time, maybe it's the first time in a long time, but you're realizing that there's, a, there's something inside your heart that needs Jesus. You need forgiveness. You need His acceptance. You need His grace. You need His love being poured out in your life. And today you're realizing he, He's not a harsh, hard God. He's a loving, holy God. Caring, but just. And today He's knocking. He's knocking on the door of people's lives. Without a doubt, He's knocking on your heart. If you're listening. And he's going, son, daughter, would you let me in? Would you allow us to dine together? Would you allow us to eat together? Would you allow us to walk together? And today, friend, if that's you and you realize that you need to make a decision, a choice, to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus, to acknowledge him in your life, that you need to make a step to go forward, whether that be for the very first time or perhaps the first time in a long time. I'd love to pray for you right where you're standing, from where I'm standing while every eye is closed. Every head is bowed. So I'm going to count to three, and after the count of three, if that's you today, just do a, a quick moment and lift up your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it. And I'll know to pray for you in this private moment, online or in the auditorium today. I'm going to count to three, friend. If that's you, just lift your hand. One, he loves you today, friend. Two, this is your moment. And three, all over this room right now, would you just quickly lift up that hand high enough and long enough for me to see it? And I'll just know to pray for you. We're going to give you a moment, people in this moment of decision. But listen, friend, it takes one step for you to go towards God. And he'll rend the heavens to meet with you. If that's you this morning, just quickly lift up that hand. High enough and long enough for me to see it. I'm going to call it one last time if that's you. It's not too late. Just lift it. Father, I thank you for what you are doing in the lives of people today. I thank you, Lord, that your grace and your abundance and your joy and your peace is overflowing. God, may we have ears to hear today about the principle of sowing and about the principle of reaping. It's how your kingdom works, Lord. And so I believe today as we are illuminated, our eyes are opened, we see more, we hear more, we think about the areas of our life and following you, walking with you, what we need to sow into to reap an incredible harvest. I pray, God, for needs to be met, as your word declares. I pray that you will provide, you will make a way. I pray that the people of God will access the kingdom today and live in the victory, live in the strength, and live in the God-given anointing to do whatever you've asked them to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.